Alright, welcome back. Um, when we left off, we went ahead and made this bathroom, put in some doors, showed you how to tag a few things. We're going to throw in a few windows and then I'm going to start talking about levels. Levels are very important, so we'll get into that very shortly. I'm just going to throw a few windows in here real quick because we need some windows. Um, let's go ahead and do a 48 by 48 double home. Uh, okay, let's do a 36 by 48. Or tell you what, let's go ahead and create. We'll create another window. Do edit type, duplicate. Remember we went over this with the doors originally. We're going to make it 48 by 48. So my width down here will change to 48 inches. Okay. I want my head height to be 7 feet. And if you notice with windows, I've got the trim. You want to put the window towards the outside of the wall. And you can kind of see the trim on the edges. If I go to this side, it'll flip. See right there, it flips. That's backwards. And even if I put it in backwards, I could always change it. And I'll show you how in a second. This little flip command right here just flips the window just like it does with doors. So those are my two windows. That was my wall. And temporary dimensions now. If you notice, my temporary dimensions are going to the center of the window and they were going to the center of the doors. I don't like that. So what I'm going to do is go to the Manage tab, Additional Settings, and down here you'll see Temporary Dimensions. I want mine to go to the faces of the core for the walls and the openings for the window. So now when I click on this, it's going to go to the window opening and the door face. So let's just make that 36 inches out of the corner. Oops. Fit 36 feet. Make that 3 feet. And make that 3 feet. And if you remember everything in Revit, I don't know if I went over this, but everything in Revit is based on feet. So if you do 3 space or 3 enter, that's going to be in feet. You have to actually put the inch mark to make it inches. Just wanted to let you know that. And then you'll notice these, these marks are the same. They're not like doors where they number consecutively. These are type marks, so these are the same window type, so it's got the same number. So if you notice, if I change this to type one, it's going to tell me, give me a warning that says everything's that type parameter is going to change every window of that type. So if I hit yes, every window changes to one. And you could easily make guess because this tag is type based. I can make this tag instant based, instance based, sorry, and it would number just like the doors do. You know, window one, window two, window three, even though they're the same window. But let's leave that for now. So there's your window. And let's go ahead and add some sliders. I'm gonna load a family again and go to my windows. And I want a slider right there. Let that family load. And there's my 48 by 48 I was looking for. And we'll put one, just kind of arbitrarily, one there and one there. And then I can always come back and say, okay, I want two feet here. And same thing over here. And there's your windows. Of course, those are number seven, which I don't want. I want that to be window two. So there you go. All right, so there's your windows. Go ahead and hit save. Get my windows in there. Look at a 3D view real quick. And you can kind of see how it's starting to take shape. We've got our doors in the front. Got some windows, got a couple windows on the side. And there's your restroom that we put in. So now let's talk about levels. Levels are extremely important. Probably one of the most important thing things in Revit all your floor plans are levels. So if you have a four story building, you'll have at least four levels, one for each story, and that's what you build your floor plans off of. Um, you see levels in any sort of a vertical plan, like an elevation or a section, or a cross section. You will not see levels in plan view. You'll be on a level. So if I come over here, um, another thing I wanted to show you, I can come over here to my elevations. If I wanted a south elevation, I can double click that. or since everything in Revit is linked, I can come over to my elevation tag right here. 
double click it and there you go it opens up the south elevation same thing here if you'll notice these little blue elevation data marks they're all links now this basement does not have one and if you notice here floor plans there is no basement there's no basement listed and that's black there is no link to that and you can create a level without having a floor plan associated with it all the rest of these have floor plans um, one thing I'm going to do real fast is we're not going to have a basement so all these basement ones top of footing bottom of footing we're just going to delete those so select those and hit delete it's going to give you a warning telling you that these views these floor plans are going to be deleted and that's okay and if you look over here you'll notice this list gets smaller top of footing and bottom of footing are going to be gone and there you go they're gone they're gone here and there's there's my levels so first thing you'll notice um, and this is really easy when you draw a level the text here is getting kind of um, obscured by the text below it if you select on the level and you'll see I'll zoom in on it this little squiggly right here it's kinda of hard to see if you break it that breaks your level line so now I can grab these little blue dots and I can put these down as far as I need to and then I can drag this over and then drag this over for whatever wording I have and that's how I can fix that um, if I wanted it back I can simply grab it grab this point and drag it back up and it will snap back into place and it's right back where it was and then again I would have to break it and now that I already had the break set up if I break it again it remembers what it was so that's the first thing about levels um, I'll show you something about the level heads before we start adding a few levels. Now on this particular project I wanted to keep it small and simple just to get you started in Revit. I'm going to add a few levels and we'll just delete them. I just wanted to show you how to add levels. But before I do that you'll see this datum here. If you look over on this end and it's just your level lines. Now I can very easily, that's what this checkbox is, if I put a check in this little checkbox, there's nothing there now, there it is. So I can put a datum level on both ends. I can turn it off on this end. Turn it back on. Oops. Turn it back on. Turn it off over here. So that's what that checkbox does. You already know what this little squiggly does. I showed you that. That would break the level line if you want it to break. Um, one thing we'll do in this view, let's uh, turn on this crop view and the region. Now this one says crop view visible or crop region visible. If you check that on, this automatically comes on. Now if you'll notice, as I bring this tighter, this is what you'll see on a sheet. This is your view, your crop view. So when you put this on a sheet, anything inside of this will be shown. Nothing outside will be shown. As you pull this in, your level lines will come in automatically. So you can very easily do this so that now your levels aren't stretched out so far. And we can go ahead and turn that off. So it's still cropped. It's just not visible. And if I turn that off, of course, the view is not cropped anymore and it puts it back the way it was. So I like to leave that on. Another thing I wanted to show you is you see this lock right here. It says I have second floor highlighted and there's the lock. That means all these level heads are locked. So if I wanted to manually drag these out, and I'll zoom in and drag them out, now you'll notice that dot is real tiny because I'm in 2D mode. If I click on that to be in 3D, I'm sorry, let me do it. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm in 2D, I'm sorry, you're right, I'm in 2D because I cropped the view. Let me uncrop that and put that back out here. There, now I have 3D and I can click on it and make it 2D and 3D. If you notice that right there, it says 3D, it says 2D. What that does, if I'm in 2D mode and I move these levels, I'm going to move that level and I'm going to move this level. I see those are all locked, that's what I was trying to get from the top because they're in 3D. When I change it to 2D, I can move just that level, and it will only move it in this plan. So if I click on that, change that to 2D, and I can move that level. And I can line it up. 
Now those 2D levels are locked. And then these will still be 3D. And I can check that to 2D. And that one's obscured. You can see it right there. Make that 2D. 2D levels can lock with each other. 3D levels can lock with each other. And what I mean by lock with each other, now you can see that lock. When I move this level, the other one's going to go with it. So those two are locked together. They'll always be aligned. If I wanted to lock these with these up here, I just have to drag it until the little line shows up showing they're aligned. Right there. Once I let go, now they're automatically locked. So now if I move these, there you go. They're all moving together. Now the difference between 2D and 3D is, like I said, 2D will only move it in this view. If I leave it as 3D, which is not going to let me go back to 3D. If I did it as 3D, it would move it in every view along the whole model. So if I was to do these in 3D view, like on this end we'll do it, every view these level lines are coming in on. So this view uh, be the north view, it's coming in closer. And then there on the north view we're back to 3D again. So if I was to pull this really close, and pull this one really close, now when I go back to the south view, you can see how close that got. Of course these are 2D, so they're, they're independent of that 3D view. Um, that's my 3D model. Now if I drag that back, that was my 3D arrow, now these are back to 3D. So that's the difference between 2D and 3D. So what's so good about levels? Well you can see this exterior wall is going up to this level called roof and it's at 21 feet tall. And this is my second floor that we're going to draw later, it's 11 feet tall. So say I want the top level to be 25 feet tall. I can very easily come in here, edit that number, 25 feet. And not only does that level go up to 25 feet, this wall which is attached to that level goes with it. And you can click on this wall, any of these walls, and it says base constraints on finished floor, top constraint, up to level, roof. And I could easily say, you know what, I want that wall, actually let me choose this wall so you can see it better. I could say I want this wall to go up to second floor. Boom. Now that, that, that wall is constrained to the second floor. Very easy. And then if I was to change the second floor level to, I don't know, 15 feet. There it is. It stretches with it. So that's what makes levels so great. Everything is drawn on a level. You can constrain the levels. I'm just undoing this because I don't want my roof to be that tall. I want it to be at 21 feet because I want 10 foot clear. Actually, we can go ahead and lower this roof. I don't want 10 foot up there. I want 9 feet, so I can make it 20 feet. So there you go. It's 20 feet. So what if my roof was at 20 feet, and let's say I had another level. I can have a parapet level, so I could have my roof actually down here. Um, let's go ahead and do that. We can go to View, and we'll create a level. I'll put a couple levels in here. We'll take them out because I'm not going to use them, but I just wanted to show you how to do it. If you go over here to View, and you can only draw levels in a vertical elevation. You cannot draw a level in a plan view. It doesn't work that way. So what we're going to do is we're going to go over to, let's see, I'm sorry, it's on the Home tab, not the View tab, Level. And I'm going to go ahead and draw a level, let's just draw it right here. The, the, the level head comes in second, so that's why I picked over there first. I just know from experience the second pick is a level head. So there's my second, there's my next level. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to rename this level. I don't want it to say level 8. And you see it automatically put a level and it created my ceiling plan as well. I want to call that parapet. 
And once I hit enter, it's going to ask me, do I want this view to be renamed as parapet? And I can say no. I can leave it as level 8 if I want to. If you notice, everything in the project browser is alphabetical order. So I could leave it level 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and then actually name them over here. But I want to go ahead and hit yes. And there they are. They are now named parapet. And I could easily take my outside walls, and I can also do a chain select from, these, from this view. I can highlight that wall, hit tab. Now all those exterior walls are highlighted. And I can say I want those to go up to the parapet. So now my roof is here, and there's my parapet level. All these numbers over here are from finished floor. But say I don't want to do the math, I've also got this number right here. I know I want that parapet to be 15 inches above the level below it, which is my roof level. So there you go. You notice I got 15 1 foot 3 inches right there, which puts me at 21 foot 3 inches, which is 1 foot 3 above the roof level. So there's how you uh, insert a level. And we've run out of time for this tutorial. On the next tutorial, I'm going to go a little bit deeper into levels. And we'll start working on the second floor and putting in some stairs. So thanks for joining us, and I'll see you in the next tutorial.